This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. It's Tuesday, and I'm joined by John Brummett. We're going to get back on our Monday schedule next week. Okay. If that's all right. But you and I have been Just wanting to, to talk about some of these state executions. It's best to talk the day after when we can actually mm -hmm. uh, put a little bit more right. uh, assessment in there. Give me your assessment so far. The state has executed three of six prisoners. How do you think uh, it has all transpired and been perceived in state and out of state? I think out of state it continues to be perceived as uh, a state in a rush to kill and somewhat uh, an unattractive reflection on the state. That's what I that's what I read in the national and international media. I also think uh, uh, outside the state, Arkansas is sort of emerging in the policy vanguard of the discussion over whether lethal injection ought to be continued. You had a conservative columnist, Ross Dathod, in the New York Times writing Sunday. Uh, man, let's go to firing squads. I mean, if you have a firing squad, you, you're not you're not having to rush to beat an expiration date on a bottle for a, for a chemical. So I think it's generally seen as a, as a, a state that's in a sort of primitive, unattractive rush to kill. I just candidly, I think that's how it's being seen right. uh, nationally in the world. But I think also it has uh, expedited uh, uh, an already percolating discussion about whether the lethal injection is the most efficient, appropriate way to do it. I think uh, there's momentum legitimately for firing squads. I really do. And I think that's, uh, we're going to have a debate about that here and elsewhere uh, imminently, I yeah. think. Well, it's, uh, I want to circle back to that when we talk about the legislature in a second. But let, let's talk about the state and how efficiently they have right. carried oh. out. Personal politics aside, there haven't been any problems with the actual process themselves to speak of. Would you well, agree? The, yeah, the, the problems with the process have had to do with the legal uh, uh, fights and the fact that of uh, seven or, or six that have been scheduled so far, three have been stopped and three uh, have have occurred. And I think the fact that, there, that there's this late legal uh, wrangling and that uh, in one case the execution was carried out at 11.56, that has contributed, I think, to the unattractive image of the state. But if your question has to do with the actual execution of the execution, I mean, uh, the drugs, yeah, they have they have gone uh, with uh, out evident incident. Now, last night, obviously, we had a late allegation that there was uh, had been uh, trouble with uh, the Jones execution by the lawyers trying to stop the subsequent. William's execution. The media witnesses and others tended to discredit uh, that motion. And the part that was uh, alleged, part of what was alleged had to do with the insertion of an IV, which was before the, uh, the, the public process, so you can't really say. But that's, that was, at this point, seems to have been discredited. So in terms of concern that, in addition to everything else, the state would do as other states have done, and out of this great many executions have at least one botched, not a case at this point. Not so the legislature may look at the potential ways, uh, methods that we use for execution when they eventually come back together and put this on their agenda. They may also look at this due process process. Is there a more systematic way either to give the governor some latitude so that we're not up against these hard expiration dates? Uh, what, or do you see the legislature taking those things up, and do you see other items that may become the focus of uh, the Arkansas state legislature? I know for a fact that the method of execution and that the difficulty in obtaining the drugs and in the long-range uh, prospects for being able to secure the drugs and the concern about the process using the drugs, I know that that will be an issue. And I think there is sub, uh, sub, uh, substantial legislative support, particularly in this legislature, to, to obviously continue the death penalty, but find another way. And I, and I keep coming back to firing squads, but that's right. what that's, seems to be at the top of the list. That, yes, I'm, I'm not clear what you mean or what anyone could do about uh, at the state legislative level, at the state level, about due process. Uh, these things have to do with uh, federal courts in addition to state courts. Uh, and uh, you can do very little statutorily uh, to change a good lawyer's options for trying to 
fight to the finish right. uh, against an execution. I'm, I'm, uh, if you have something more specific well, in mind. The right? death warrants that Governor Hutchinson is signing spe specifies a particular day, so there's a 24-hour period. Could the statutes be altered to say he has the latitude to extend okay. after that deadline? Does he... Oh. Could, could there be some well, ways you, you to tell, work you, around some of that you tell complication? Me. Yeah, you'll have to tell me before I can answer, I'm sorry to say. Is, is that death warrant setting a date and then, and then is, it, is it statutorily required that, that, that by setting that date, midnight is the, is the deadline? Or, or would that have to be changed by legislation? If so, that would seem easy enough to change. And yeah, it would seem to be a reasonable uh, uh, reform, if you could call it that, that, that if you're up against a midnight deadline and the lawyers are fighting you at the U.S. Supreme Court at 1130, then, then there, uh, yeah, I mean, I, if that can be done, if that's a matter of legislative enactment or, or state discretion, sure, sure. I think it's being researched. Well, so. well. Last question for you on executions. What do you write about uh, your friend, the used car salesman Bubba, over in the Delta? What do you think Bubba thinks about this execution business? If you were to try to predict. Well, Bubba has become a nuanced and complex character over the years. He is. <laughs> he is not your. He's. He's grown, and he is not your traditional reactionary right-wing type. He is more thoughtful as he's gotten older. He's had some heart trouble and some health issues. Uh, I think that it bothers him, but he thinks it's the right thing to do. Now he's, but that's, uh, but that doesn't mean that he reflects, uh, he has become less and less typical of the uh, standard uh, Arkansas, rural Arkansas conservative. Uh, Bubba side, I think the Arkansas attitude, which, which is uh, what you may be asking, is and I'm hearing from these people. Believe me, uh, uh, is is it's this concept that I find fatally flawed of vengeance. Everybody says to me, "What about the victims? This this gives them closure." That I, I don't think a a criminal punishment in our justice system ought to be about. Uh, revenge or equaling a score, I, and, and I don't think killing twice justifies killing once. However, I in Arkansas am in the vast minority on that, as, I, as is evident from polling and is evident from my digital communications. Let's take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back and talk about Congressman Jay Dickey, All right. whom you had the pleasure of covering and I did too. We're back with more right after this. Arkansas Electric Cooperative Corporation provides electric energy across two-thirds of Arkansas. This is an exciting time in our energy history, with incredible progress being made in renewable energy and storage technologies. As our energy portfolio continues to diversify, we'll maintain an all-the-above strategy to provide reliable and affordable electricity. Ever since the first light bulbs were placed in our members' homes, the electric cooperatives have been the solutions provider for our members, and we want to continue that well into the future. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me. Welcome back to Talk Business and Politics Daily. I'm with John Brummett. All right, let's talk about uh, former Congressman Jay Dickey passed away last week. He was a little bit of a rascal and a fun politician to cover in your years. Give me, tell me your obituary of Jay Dickey. What do you remember most about him? He was in the unlikely vanguard of what, what we're now seeing, which is the republicanization of the state. And uh, uh, he got elected in what, until he came along was a staunch Demo rural conservative democratic district, the fourth district of South Arkansas, and, and, and as a Republican got elected. And this was before Republicans got elected to everything, about, about 10 to 15 years before. He did it largely by accident, which is what happens. Uh, uh, Burl Anthony got caught up in the House bank scandal and, uh, and, and, over, and, and hot checks and being an insider, got beat by the... Uh, disreputable late Bill McEwen. <laughs> right. And so Dickey Secretary of State right. at the time. So Dickey finds himself running against Bill McEwen and, and, and defeats him. Beyond that, Jay Dickey was known just for being, being a quirky guy. Uh, he, he he traveled around with with the 
with this lovely uh, uh, Rammer honor, uh, uh, Rammer, right? Uh, Rami. Rami. Yeah. I mean, whenever we're with him, he would go to a. He would be having Campaign a. Campaign with him out on the He would be having corner. a town hall, and you'd look up there and standing by the podium with the congressman <laughs> is, and the and as you have reported. A man after your own heart. Oh, I, I loved it. I loved it. I shared with him. He and I, he. I've shared with him, and I shared with Huckabee and other uh, Republicans a love of dogs. Uh, he also could just be odd in some of the things that he said and in some of his behaviors. A good athlete, by the way. Yeah. Invited me in, uh, in 1993 when I was in Washington writing a book about Clinton's first year and he was a freshman congressman. He called me one day and said, let's play tennis at the White House. And <laughs> forgive me, but I thought he was asking me to get him in to the White House <laughs> to play because he thought maybe I knew Clinton so long and he was, and I said, I don't know if we can get in there. He said, I can get us in there. I'm in Congress. I said, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and we played, and he had a lovely uh, uh, serve and volley game. He had played for the Razorbacks, yeah. I think, as a, as a tennis player, college tennis player. Good hands, good volleys. We had a great time. Uh, and he was just fun, and, and, but odd, quirky. But he rose in those 10 years to be on the House Appropriations, and he was good at tending to his constituents, his constituents and he came home every weekend. Uh, just uh, a guy about, you, about whom you could hardly say a bad word, even if you disagreed with his politics. What an interesting character, I think lovable he, he character. He changed Arkansas politics for some of those federal officials in the fact that he did come home every weekend. And, and then this forced business, a lot of them to do it. Right, and then this business of, of living in your, uh, uh, <laughs> he was in the vanguard of this, which has been uh, uh, copied by Living in your congressional office, had a yeah. pull-out couch or right, something. Right. So. <laughs> well, uh, he will be missed. Our prayers and thoughts are with his family and uh, his friends, and uh, we will talk much more about Jay Dickey, I'm sure, in the next couple of days. Thank you very much, John Brummett. You bet. All right. Take care. Thank you for watching. That's all for today's program. We'll see you next time.